Hello, my name is Steven. Welcome to my channel. It's kind of exciting to say welcome to my channel now that I have more than one video. So, welcome. Uh, I wasn't going to film another video so soon after these uh, last couple, but um, a question I get frequently through Facebook Messenger mostly, because I know a lot of people on Facebook, is uh, how do I prepare for training? How do I survive training? And uh, just between grocery shopping today and coming back to my apartment, I got two messages from people um, asking about how to, how to get through training. So I figured, well, since I've got the time, I might as well drop a little video. So I wrote some notes down and I thought it would be just one or two pages and it ended up being quite a bit. So I hope this video isn't too long. I apologize. So let me just jump into um, the video. Let's see. I brought to training two full-size suitcases um, and my roller board. We had to bring our roller board to training for them to be able to uh, approve it. Our luggage wasn't included in our uniform. So I brought two uh, large suitcases and my roller board and I think a carry-on, a little bag. Um, the rolling tote, I had a rolling tote from uh, Travel Pro. I put that in one of the suitcases and kind of packed clothes and stuff in it and around it. I also did the same thing with my e-bags lunch bag. So otherwise I would have been carrying like 15 bags. So I put those bags in my larger bags and packed in and around those. What I put in those suitcases were my required items, passport, I had, uh, I bought uh, my, I have my smartwatch. I also brought like a Timex as a backup because it's a required item to fly with. Flashlights, I have like five mini flashlights just in case one of them goes out because a flashlight is a required item as well. Uh, and you need that to find those, you know, Diet Cokes and those dark, uh, dark carts during, during red eyes. Um, training uniform pieces. In our class, we had to dress in um, prescribed pieces of clothing. They gave us a very, very strict um, rule in terms of what we should wear during training. So I brought those clothes uh, and lots of them. I think I brought four or five polo shirts in, in black polo shirts, uh, four or five black pairs of pants, um, just to keep it simple. I kept everything black. Um, lots of socks, lots of underwear. Um, and I brought some of those little um, laundry packets, those little little um, things you just throw in the wash, uh, because I didn't want to do a lot of laundry at the hotel, because um, with all those people, it would have been really difficult to get that laundry done. Um, clothes for days off. We had one or two days off a week um, during training, so I wanted some clothes like bathing suits. <laughs> Very important. Always have a spare bathing suit with you. Um, we uh, brought bathing suits and clothes for um, going out to dinner or something. Um, I did spend one afternoon in Fort Lauderdale by myself. Um, I gave myself one day off of studying. Uh, and I also brought uh, clothes for my domicile when I was actually going to my base after training. I wanted to have some clothes to be able to switch into and, and change into. Uh, classroom supplies. I brought two fairly large binders. One was already full with um, the pre-hire workbook that was emailed to us, including aircraft schematics, emergency equipment, um, vocabulary terms that we'd have to learn. Um, I put all of those things in plastic sheet protectors. And for my schematics, for example, to practice schematics, I used ultra fine tip dry erase markers, which are really kind of hard to find, uh, but ultra fine tip. And I would, for example, fill out all the schematics uh, for my aircraft familiarization on a sheet. When I got a mistake, when I made a mistake, I'd wipe the whole sheet clean, start from the scratch, start from the cockpit and wait, work my way back. And I did that, well, I did that for like six weeks, so that when I finally got my schematics tests, they were on point, they were done. Uh, the second uh, binder I used for handouts, homework, and for notes. Um, homework. Now, in my airline, we have what were called study guides. We got all of them at the beginning of training. 
And in my mind, I thought I would do them in order during training before they were due. That was a huge mistake, monumental mistake, and I learned my mistake early. So I uh, get those suckers done, get those knocked out of the way. I think what they really were for was to force you to actually open up your, your FAM, your, your manual, and look for answers in your homework. So it was a way for us to really be forced to familiarize ourselves with our FAM and our, uh, our flight attendant manual. Um, and uh, some of those were super easy and it took an hour. Some were really difficult and took a number of hours and which I really should have or could have used for studying things like, you know, well, other important information. Um, so extra binder paper, lots of pens, lots of highlighters, post-it notes, extra flashcards, nothing unusual. I just took a bunch for myself because I go through stuff really easily. I also took a few extra things with me because there's always someone in class who forgot a pen or didn't have enough um, flashcards. So who doesn't want to be the hero and just be generous and give them away? Uh, odds and ends, extra hangers. I'm a huge fan of huggable hangers. I think you can get them at QVC or HSN, I forget. Uh, but um, they're super, super thin. They're flocked. They're kind of fuzzy. You can get copies of them at TJ Maxx and Marshalls for cheap, but um, the hotel that you'll stay in or training center, wherever you're going, I will promise you, I promise you, they will not have enough hangers. Take extra hangers. Earplugs and an eye mask, a sleep mask. Um, you're probably going to have a roommate, uh, and your roommate will probably have entirely different habits than you will. Uh, my roommate liked to stay up till three or four in the morning studying. I didn't. I liked, I need to sleep. Uh, so I wore earplugs and my sleep mask while he was up studying. Uh, I would not have survived without those two things. Extra charging cables for my phone, for my smartwatch, for everything that needs a charging cable. Bring extra charger, charging bricks and cables. An extension cord because... <laughs> You know, hotel rooms, you may not have two outlets in the entire room and you, you both have laptops, watches, phones, blah, blah, blah. So bring an extension cord. Food containers for food prep. In my class, there was one little cafe uh, close to our tra training center. We, we could get lunch, but lunch was like 10, 12, 14, 15 bucks a day. And that that was a lot of money after a while. So... Um, I ended up going to Walmart or Walgreens, you know, a Walmart or somewhere for lunch and meats, things like that, and uh, simple meals that I could keep in the little fridge in our room. And um, it saved me a lot of money. Um, personal, I call them personal totem items. Now, some people bring family photos. Some people bring little strings of fairy lights, you know, around their bed, something from home to remind them of uh, happier times, uh, less stressful times. Uh, I don't know, a throw. Um, I'll show you what I brought. Now, my ex-boyfriend is uh, an energy worker and he's really a wonderful guy. And he gave me this little crystal um, to help with clarity. And I usually keep it near my bed at nighttime. Um, I never told him how important this little thing is, but I really value this quite a bit because um, I need clarity. But I, um, I kept that next to my bed. I'm a potter. I'm an artist. I'm a clay artist. Uh, and when I'm throwing a pot and it's not very successful, you sometimes you have this little pad of clay, a little round disc of clay on the bottom of that, the wheel. And what I would do is I would throw that little pad. I would make that into something small, like a little bowl or something. And I call it a ghost uh, of the bowl or piece that did not survive. And I would fire that and glaze that. And this is one of them. And it's just a little bowl um, that is that was clay that was left over on the wheel um, from something I cut off the wheel that was not working out very well. And so it reminds me that I can always salvage something from an experience. And I just love this little bowl. And uh, it makes me happy. And it reminds me to not give up the first time you know, really make an effort. And so I put this next to my bed 
uh, and I kept um, things in it to remind me to really um, work hard and know that everything that came before this journey of being a flight attendant was to bring me towards the next step of my journey. And this one was to get my wings. Um, so I, I'm gonna cry about this little ball. And uh, I, I promise not to cry about this. I'm a crier. Uh, this is a little paper airplane. It doesn't look like a paper airplane because it was made by a five-year-old about 40 years ago. Uh, my brother passed away when he was five. I was eight and I, I watched the whole thing happen. It's a traumatic story. Maybe one day I'll share it with you. But just before he died, my grandmother tried to teach us how to make paper airplanes. Uh, she had never made a paper airplane in her life. I can promise you that. But uh, she tried to <laughs> teach us to do that. And when I was 22, she gave me um, the paper bag that she had uh, saved all those paper airplanes. And um, I think it's kind of fitting that the only evidence I have of his really been around except for some photographs are little paper airplanes and that I'm a flight attendant. And so I keep this one in my, uh, near my bed. I have one very much like it in my luggage at all times. So it's my little personal um, totem to my brother who is my little guardian angel. I am gonna cry. Um, so I keep those things near me to inspire me to not give up, inspire me to remind myself that I have been through more difficult times and more stressful times and come out stronger. Um, so I had those things with me. I didn't mean to talk about that that long. I apologize. Uh, before training, uh, someone created a Facebook page for our class alone uh, and made it a secret group so that we could all meet there and talk and share and uh, and learn about each other and have a safe venue for us to to ask questions and and you know vent and we still use that page today. Uh, find out who your roommate will be. We got a little list in our pre-hire booklet about who would be rooming with us during training, and I stalked my uh, roommate on Facebook. Didn't stalk him, but I found him on Facebook, and we shared a little bit and we chatted so that. When we first, when we finally met, it wasn't a big surprise and uh, we already kind of knew each other. It was nice. Um, let's see, get to the airport early. I got to the airport super early and um, because we all had to wear these particular clothing items to training and on uh, the flight to training, it was pretty easy to recognize other people in our class. Um, I was leaving from Atlanta and I think there were about six or eight of us uh, from Atlanta and uh, so you know you recognize each other in the airport and sort of start conversations and chatting because um, it really is important to make uh, relationships and training things go a lot easier now I had been watching a lot a lot like hundreds of hours I think of Facebook videos on Facebook YouTube videos about training and one of the tips I had heard was if you're non-revving or if you're going to training, bring a little something for each flight attendant that might be on your your flight. I knew that um, the largest aircraft that we uh, work with is an A321 uh, and uh, that there are five flight attendants. So uh, I was broke. I will, uh, at one point soon, I'll share about how broke I was. Um, Things were tight, and uh, but I went to Starbucks and I got five five dollar gift cards, which at the time for me was a lot of money. And I, um, when I got on board the the plane to training, I gave who I thought was the lead flight attendant. In the end, she was really just a chaser, not just a chaser. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a chaser sometimes. Uh, a chaser is one of the flight attendants who uh, is not always on the same pairing as the main basic crew. Um, in the end, she was our chaser, um, the fifth person on our flight, uh, our crew. And I said, hey, you know, I'd like to give these, could you, uh, could you please give these to the other flight attendants as a small thank you for getting to, train, to training on time and safe and all that. And she just was the sweetest she just thought that was the sweetest thing. And um, after the seatbelt sign turned off, when uh, we could get up and move around, she brought me through the entire aircraft and did a pre-flight check on every piece of emergency equipment for positions A, I think all of them, A, B, C. 
Um, and then had me do a pre-flight check on all of our emergency equipment on that aircraft. Invaluable. For 25 bucks, mm -hmm. uh, it, <laughs> it was a steal. And my classmates were like, what is he doing up there? What, why are they treating him like this? Um, it was very exciting and um, really worth that 25 bucks. Um, when you get to the hotel, meet with your roommate, get to the room, choose what bed you want to be in. Don't be too much of a stickler, um, but set ground rules ASAP. What time you guys are waking up? Who's going to take a shower first? You know, set up all of the rules right away so that there's no surprises and no headbutting uh, during training oh, because I'll tell you, little things add up. And when you're in a stressful situation, uh, you want to have a, a roommate uh, on, on good terms. Um, let's see. My roommate uh, in training was pretty cool. Um, I stress, um, under a uh, stress, I get very anxious and I have to over prepare and um, over study and throw myself at things um, like a pit bull, you know, and my roommate was more chill, you know, he's like, he was getting mad at me because I was stressing so much and putting so much pressure on myself. Um, so he was a pretty cool roommate. Be early for everything. I can't stress that enough. Be early for the shuttle. If you're, if you're uh, in a hotel and not in a training center, be early for your shuttle. Do not be that one that everyone's like, oh, where's Steven? Where's Steven? You know, call him on the phone. Be early. Oh my God, I can't even tell you. Um, so sleep as much as you can. These things are not in exact order, but sleep as much as you can if sleep is what you need. I needed to sleep. I was 47 years old in training. Um, I needed to sleep. Otherwise, I would have been too stressed. Everyone in the class before us got sick, violently ill. Everyone, including the instructors, uh, start taking vitamins before you go to training. When you're in training, this is going to sound silly, but do not touch your face. I'll repeat that. Do not touch your face. I was a makeup artist for many, many years, and you shouldn't touch your face anyway. Just lots of ugly things are on your hands, and you don't want them on your face or in your eyes, mucous membranes. Um, it's a sure way to get sick. So as a flight attendant, just never touch your face um, and hand sanitizers. Um, instructors, they're going to give you a lot of instruction. They're going to tell you that they're going to introduce you a lot of rules right off the bat so that there are no surprises. They are not there to trip you. They're not there to get you. They want you to succeed. So they're going to be very clear about what the rules are. Follow the rules to a T. Um, because I'll tell you, if you didn't have never watched that, uh, was it TLC? There was a TV show called um, Flight Attendant Training School or something, Frontier. They, they followed a class during uh, training. And you know, you were a minute late, pff, goodbye, sayonara. Um, you know, the instructors will tell you everything you need to do. Just do it. Don't allow your wings to be taken away from you because you wanted to take a five minute more longer nap or you couldn't stay awake in class. Just, you don't want to give up your wings for something stupid. So follow the rules. Uh, let's see. All right. Rules. One of the rules we had was stay out of other people's rooms. If it was not your assigned hotel room, do not go into someone else's room. Do not even step over the threshold. Don't even go in. Um, people are thrown out of training classes because of all manner of things. Um, it's kind of like college in that uh, you really don't know you're in trouble until you're already in trouble. Just don't go in someone else's room. Trust me on this one. Don't party. I think every time a class graduates, we hear horror stories of people rolling into the training hotel room, hotel lobby at four in the morning, screaming uh, at, at someone or passing out or throwing up or coming in just, you know, looking like a wreck um, and, and losing their wings or their opportunity for this amazing career because they wanted to go out drinking. Trust me, you're going to have plenty of 24-hour, 30-hour layovers in all sorts of fantastic places 
If you want to drink and party, you're going to have amazing opportunities. Do not do it during training. Um, stay away from gossip and drama. Doesn't that sound simple? Sounds easy. Um, oh, drama? Oh, I'm no drama. The people who are the most drama never think they're drama. Uh, and gossip. You know, we're all best friends the first week or two. And then by week three, somehow it just, little things kind of slip out, you know. And uh, there's all sorts of gossip and rumor. Just stay away from it. If you recognize that it's happening around you, step back. Go find somewhere else to study. If you realize, you know, when you hear yourself saying something, you think, oh my gosh, sh shut up. Do it. You know, just stay away from drama. It's, um... It will, my shirt, a little snug. Um, all right. I shouldn't have to tell you this, but don't hook up during training. That guy might seem super cute and he might be the best looking guy in the entire class. And under stressful situations, you may feel something. Do not hook up with him during training. Trust me, you wouldn't hook up with him outside of training. Promise. I promise you. Um, you will get in trouble. He will get in trouble. Someone will hear about it and someone's going to start talking about it. So just don't. Uh, training isn't that long that we can't just control ourselves and be adults. And I only mention it because it happens all the time. It would happen in the hot tub while we were studying. I mean... I guess that's a problem with studying in a hot tub, I guess. But um, studying, studying groups, studying versus solo, I would start out frequently enough studying with a group because there are certain things that were just easier to, to um, hold on to when it's part of a conversation. But sometimes groups would start to cascade into laughs and stories and chatting and someone gets a pizza and then we're eating pizza and then studying has just left the room. Um, so I was conscious enough of that and I would just um, gather my stuff quietly, not like, oh, you people, you know, um, I'm taking my toys and going away. Um, just quietly gather your things and then say, hey, I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Find somewhere quiet to study. My favorite place to study was my hope, my room. I would sit cross-legged in bed, a pillow in front of me and my study material propped up on that pillow. And I would just sit there and study and study and study. Um, pass all of your exams. That sounds silly. Pass all of your exams, but don't try to get hundreds on everything. Don't try to be the superhero. Someone in the room will always try to be a superhero. There's this one guy who, when they would, um, the instructors would call people's names and those people would stand up. And it was clear after a time or two, that those people got hundreds on the exams and we'd all clap. And it was exciting if you got a hundred. Um, and there was this one kid who would just literally, he'd have his arms like ready to push himself out of the, himself out of the chair because he got, I mean, he got hundreds on everything. Um, he was just ready to push himself out of that chair. Um, uh, Putting so much stress on yourself to get hundreds on everything and be the superstar, super, blah, 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 superstar student is unnecessary stress. Pass your tests. Um, our class had to pass everything with 90s. Um, I guess a couple of years ago, our airline allowed people to pass with 80s. And um, they changed that for uh, a few reasons. I will not say here. Uh, the people who you think will be your besties may not be the people you can depend on uh, as much in training. The people I, I connected with right away from, from the moment we were in our interviews are not always the people that I needed the most during training. Um, so the people who you really feel the, the most connected to might not be the ones that are there for you when you're struggling. Um, Though there is one guy in training that really, um, it was not easy to be friends. He was um, kind of, it made, he made it very awkward. But I don't know if I would have learned my emergency drills or my emergency commands 
without him. Uh, he was amazing. There's a very strange tapping going on in next door. Um, don't show fear. During the water ditching, everyone's nervous. I don't swim. I can't swim. I can't get my hair wet. Um, <laughs> don't show fear. Just get in there. Chances are the water's not over your head anyway. Just get in there and do it. The minute you show fear, they're not going to let you pass. Uh, same thing with the slide, with the emergency um, slide. Uh, you cannot stand at the top of that slide and show fear. They're going to fail you on that. And you don't want to go home and not have this opportunity for this career because you were afraid you're gonna, gonna slide. Uh, so do not show fear. In class, write down questions before you ask them because chances are they're gonna answer your question at some point before that time that lesson's over. So if you write your question down, you'll probably phrase it more accurately anyway. And then at a break or a pause or when they say, does anyone have any questions? You can raise your hand and read aloud a really well-crafted question that makes you look really intelligent, thoughtful, and mindful uh, and respectful of the uh, instructor's time. And uh, yeah, so more than likely the question will already be answered and you can kind of just scribble that question out and go on. Your classmates may not know that you just saved them 15 minutes of needless conversation, uh, but it can really streamline a class too. Oh, and stay away from what if questions. The instructors are there to tell you uh, to share information. They're going to share with you what you need to know. They're not going to throw surprise alternate universe theories at you. Um, so save everyone the time. And what if there's a Pekingese in the cockpit and a Siamese cat is in the laboratory A? What do we... Don't, if it starts with what if, don't ask it. Just don't, don't even write it down. Um, let's see, uh, it isn't over till it's over. Um, the guy I mentioned I had a hard time um, really connecting with, he, he, he'd be a great friend, but in training, his personality was, was just difficult to be with. Um, he failed his OE, his, in some people, some airlines as IOE. He failed his his, uh, op his uh, initial um, operating experience, uh, which is hard to do. Uh, but he, he failed that um, and um, didn't continue on. He had his wings. He graduated. Um, and he, he struggled valiantly in training to, to get those wings. And um, he did not pass his OE. Uh, so you're not you're not guaranteed this job until you finally prove to them that you can do your job. Um, so not to stress you out, but uh, graduation's a beautiful day, but that's not where it ends. Um, crash pads, if you haven't already, um, I made another video about crash pads. If you haven't already talked with people about crash pads, start when you're in training uh, because uh, it'll pay off. Crying, I cried every day uh, and I've mentioned in this video or another I am an ugly crier I'm a mess um, I would find a pole or somewhere and stand on the other side of it and just weep out of sheer um, anxiety fear um, I did not have a plan B I was again I'll share about what my life was like before this but I didn't have a plan B um, I was so anxious and I was trying so hard. I've never applied myself like I did during training. And I cried and cried and cried out of stress, fear, and anxiety. And then about halfway through the class, halfway through training, those <laughs> crying fits were more out of gratitude that I just saw what was possible and what life was going to be like. And I just was <laughs> overcome by emotion really easily. And then last week, I was crying so much because I knew that eventually training was going to end. And as difficult as training was, as complicated and stressful as it was, it was also one of the most amazing experiences of my life. I am by nature a solitary person. I can go days without talking to anybody if I'm not working. 
besides the barista at Starbucks. I mean, I am uh, really pretty solitary and I never really liked a lot of people around me. I never, um, I never needed to go to the movies with someone. I can eat quite easily at a restaurant by myself. Um, Self-sufficient, nice. I never thought that I would come to fall in love with 44 people in my AM class. I fell in love with these people. And when we finally dispersed after graduation and our OEs, I was left standing in the airport. I am gonna cry. I was left in that airport for the first time alone in a month without these people who had held me up during the most stressful part of my life. And um, it was it was very difficult. So this job has changed me in a whole bunch of ways. But um, um, yeah, I connected really deeply with my class and I love my classmates. Uh, and training itself was a beautiful thing. Uh, and once you've gone through your own, you'll know what I'm talking about. And um, I know that I've been talking for a real long time. Uh, so uh, I would like to thank you for your time. If there's something you didn't think that I touched on, oh. <laughs> um, if there's something you didn't think I touched on or would like me to expand upon, drop a comment below and let me know uh, what you'd uh, like to hear. And um, I'd like to thank you for your time. I think I already said that. Oh. Subscribe, subscribe. I know that um, this isn't a race. I know that I'm not gonna be better or more liked the more subscriptions I have, but it does make me feel good. <laughs> um, so subscribe, like the video, give me a thumbs up. And uh, again, drop a comment or a question or share your own experience about uh, training and what I may have missed or what you agree with, what you disagree with. And um, there you go. Thanks a lot. Fly safe. And I will, um, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Why did I make that noise? Have a good night. Bye.